Okay, so I wanted to get started asking um, you both about the development of the documentary and what really inspired you both to want to make the film and how that process really got start, started overall. Uh, I can I can start. I had nothing to do with making the documentary and I actively didn't want it to happen. <laughs> so Zach can build off of that. Yeah, so uh, Larange and I uh, are old friends um, and I've been a filmmaker my whole life and I uh, fairly early after meeting him started bugging him about the idea of making a film on his life um, because he's just a very odd person and unique and specific. And I thought he was a, a character people would enjoy watching. Um, and yeah, so for, for years, I just bugged him about the idea of making a movie. And then really soon after he finally caved and said I could, um, he started having this health crisis and it uh, proved to be an interesting spine for a feature film and, and uh, we we're glad we started, yeah. Yeah, and um, Zach, I also wanted to ask you about directing the film and what that experience was like for you um, once production began to really get the project going um, in sense of directing as well. Uh, well, directing is a new thing for me. I've been a film editor my whole life. And so uh, it was a big leap of faith and uh, definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, it was like something I'd always been curious about and wanted to try my hand at. And uh, I was really lucky to be able to do so on a film about a close friend of mine and um, someone who uh, would give me the latitude I needed to be able to try and fail and try to pivot and do something differently. And um, so it was, a, it was a great experience, but it was definitely new and unique for sure. And while I was watching the film, I liked the, all the interviews as well that you include with um, the musicians and what was that process like for you both to really figure out who you wanted to interview and include in the film and setting that up those interviews and figuring out what you wanted to discuss with them. I have not seen the movie and I don't uh, know what it, musicians are in there. <laughs> yeah, Austin's not seen the film yet. Mm -hmm. um, he'll see it for the first time when it premieres at Slamdance. But yeah, I mean, uh, over the course of the project, we interviewed a, basically every artist that uh, Laurent has worked with, uh, with the exception of maybe Cool Keith. And um, it sort of got whittled down and there are a number of rappers he's worked with who are no longer in the film. And um, it really sort of, uh, the film started kind of telling us what it needed to be. And um, when we realized that it, really the story we had captured was the, the uh, process of him creating this uh, album for Adult Swim, this one specific album, it sort of uh, defined who we wanted to hear from in terms of, uh, in terms of the information for the film, yeah. And also speaking about um, the Adult Swim project and just um, all the records in general, what was that experience like as well and really deciding what um, music to focus on in the film and really um, creating the score for the movie as well? Uh, well, for me, um, it's sort of the same answer. Like uh, for a while, I kind of approached the film as like I was going to make a complete bio pic of uh, Larange's life and cover a lot more ground and try to do a, more of a retrospective of his whole career and everyone he's worked with. And um, when the health crisis happened, it sort of allowed me to pivot and um, I kind of decided that I wanted to focus more on that story. And instead of it being a more comprehensive film about his life, it was like a, a very specific window of time. And um, I like to call it like three years in the life of LaRange. And um, so in terms of the music in the film, it does span a lot of his career, but uh, we really did try to keep it kind of within the pocket of that time. Um, you hear a lot of the music from the album he's creating while he's creating it. and a lot of the uh, music that you hear in the film was sort of um, didn't, uh, it, it predated the album he was making or was the album he was making, it didn't go further than that, so. And also I wanted to ask about you, Laurence, about deciding to pursue music as a career and how that really changed for you um, once um, your health um, started to 
to deteriorate and what that experience was like for you to really um, focus on your music and continuing on with that aspect as well. Yeah, you know, um, I, I really never intended to uh, to do music for a career. I, I always enjoyed it and I liked uh, um, I liked playing, but I always sort of saw myself as um, uh, more of a producer for or a songwriter for um, my own enjoyment because I knew that my style and the things that I enjoyed about music and the things that I wanted to do weren't necessarily the same things that everyone else enjoyed. And, uh, and so I was always more uh, focused on um, being a writer or uh, just being a um, sort of a creative just person. And, um, you know, my goal from, from an early age was always to just be able to have a part-time job so that way, you know, I could fund some of my life with some sort of art. And then, you know, the other half, I worked at a bookstore, you know, or something. And so, you know, for, for my life to have taken this shape is all very, you know, different than what I anticipated. And, um, and it's honestly, it's, you know, um, different from what I, what I had really wanted, you know. Uh, but uh, I'm very grateful for what is for everything that's happened and the opportunities that I've gotten. I just never saw it taking shape that way. But after the year, you know, I mean, being that I, I was always more focused on being creative than, you know, being a musician necessarily. I, I it, it was a it was a hard blow, but it was also an opportunity for you know you to find new ways to make music and find new ways to work around uh, um, your issues and to be able to um, uh, uh, be creative, not only about the result, but also about the process. And um, speaking about the process now, I also wanted to just follow up and see how um, your process to really creating music has changed in recent years and just your overall approach now to really balancing um, your music career um, with your health as well. Yeah, so I mean, uh, a lot of there are a lot of techniques I've sort of developed, you know, for for music. Um, a lot of times I use touch because um, frequencies, you know, have vibrations, and so it, it, there are a lot of frequencies I can't hear. So I use my eyes an awful lot, and then I use touch where I'll um, turn up the speakers enough to be able to uh, hold my hand to them and just feel the vibrations, or I tune instruments up to where my ears can hear more clearly and then I'll tune them back down if I need to or back up. Um, and so there are a lot of techniques that I've developed to be able to work around the uh, the ear problems. Also um, now with the um, music being able to be played um, after COVID and are you going back and playing more or doing shows again or um, what's that process like as well on that aspect of your career? Yeah, so so I've never I've never enjoyed touring really. I've never really enjoyed playing shows, um, just because you know the things that I enjoy about music are always just on my own. I, I really like exploring whatever shape you know that art sort of takes. Um, going and performing is nice to be able to meet the people that you're getting in touch with, and um, to be able to uh, make that human contact is 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 very rewarding, but it's not um, by a long shot my favorite thing to do, but I have been touring with my group Marlo over the last couple of years, and we, we take about a month out of the year to go tour over in Europe. And um, going back to more of the technical sides of the film, Zach, I wanted to ask you about also producing the film and what that experience was like as well and balancing that with directing over. Sure. Well, I mean, producing the film, it was a very small film. So it was really a skeleton crew of myself, um, another producer, John Webb, um, who was also our assistant director, and uh, my DP, Trevor Metcher. Um, we brought on more producers after the fact to help me essentially cover all of the things that I missed legally while making the film. Um, you know, John, uh, who was my producer while I was making it, is a director himself. So really he was kind of just teaching me how to direct on the fly, like building the airplane while we were flying um, and giving me a lot of great pointers. He's brilliant in that sense. Um, but we missed a lot of things legally. So uh, we brought on producers after the fact to really help us 
make sure we had covered all of our legal grounds and gotten all our clearances and everything. But no, I mean, producing while uh, I was making it really came down to the nitty gritty technical stuff of booking flights and hotels and um, filming equipment and sound sound equipment and stuff. And um, I, I enjoy that process. I, I've done that before and uh, I'm so neurotic and uh, I would almost be freaking out if I wasn't in control of all those aspects anyway. Like I like to know that the hotel is booked because I was the one who booked it. So um, it was kind of forced upon me the producer title more than anything but I was really lucky to have John with me while I was doing it and and the great producers uh, that I brought on after the fact. And after um, you finished filming uh, what was the editing process like overall as well to really figure out what story you wanted to tell in the final version? Yeah well it was a really long process it was arduous and um, like I, as I mentioned, I'm a film editor for my profession. And so that's the part that I really enjoyed and was looking forward to. Um, but it was really different on this one. Um, for the first time I was saying things that I had always loathed when directors said to me, like, we can't cut that shot. We spent all this money on that shot or it took us three days to get that shot. We can't cut that shot. So suddenly uh, there were all these other voices in my head in, in terms of what I wanted the final thing to be. It was also really daunting because um, I was making a film about one of my oldest and closest friends. And so there was a lot of pressure that I was putting on myself to make the, the final film worth the journey. And in the end, you can't, you know, put that kind of pressure. You just have to make the movie that you filmed. And um, there was a lot, there was a long time of trying to, uh, I've been saying fit like a square peg in a round hole here, like trying to make the movie something that it just wasn't. And um, part of that was that I didn't want to be in it. I'm, I was shy and didn't want to see my face in it or hear my voice in it. Uh, and so um, there was years of me trying to make the film something else. And it wasn't until I just came to terms with what I had shot and trying to make it the most authentic version of what it was that I feel like I acquiesced to putting myself back in it and made it more about our friendship and um, really the process of making the film at all became an element and I think it was a better project for it. And um, like you mentioned earlier, bringing the film now to Slam Dance and what's that experience been like for you both gearing up to bring it to the festival and share it with audiences there as well? Uh, well, it's been hectic, uh, but we're really excited to be at Slam Dance, but it has been um, hectic. Yeah, we, we uh, when we were accepted, we hadn't finished color correction yet. We still had some sound mixing to do. So there's uh, been a lot of work just over the last month and a half to, to get us ready. Um, and I've never been to Park City. Uh, this will be a first for most of the members of our crew. So it's definitely a new uh, thing and we're excited, but we don't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. What about you, Austin? What are, are you excited to go to Park City? Yeah, you know, after like a harrowing event that the police will have, like a, they'll put a blanket on the victims, you know, <laughs> and like that's like a, a what they call a, a comfort zone, you know, because it's sectioned off. And so yeah. when you leave a comfort zone, it's a good thing because you're rejoining the world, you know. Now, to be to be fair, I made that up, but. It, it, but it seems like it's a good metaphor i bought it well it wasn't a, it wasn't meant to be a lie it was meant to be a metaphor okay. there's a fine line okay i think that was mainly it but thank you both again for taking the time to speak with me today i appreciate it of course thanks so much for talking. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. you too thanks